Welcome to Transmissions. You will usually hear this complaint from many people that uh, they are not free. They are not free to have something or they are not free to do something or they feel very very limited and small and it is their struggle to become something big, to become more free, to become more happy by achieving the things that they think are going to make them free and happy. What makes us free and what makes us bound? Let us examine in detail through our direct observation. Let us find the things that set us free and let us find that which is binding us, which is limiting us. Just like before, we have these four options in front of us. There are objects, which is the world, there is this body and the mind which also forms this person and there is this witnessing consciousness. There is nothing else here. We can try to find out of these four options what is it that is binding us. The objects are bound by forces of nature, by the laws of the nature. They have no freedom there. Why are there laws? Why the, why the objects must be bound? As we know, the objects are structured. They are organized. This world is organized. And this organization itself is the law. Without the laws, the objects won't remain objects. Without these organizations, without these laws, the whole experience of the world will disappear in an eye blink. Because there is a structure, because there is a well-formed experience, it has to be bound by laws. Otherwise, there is no experience. Otherwise, nothing is meaningful here in the world. So, if you think you are the object, then obviously there will be a structure there and that structure will be bound. It will be bound by the laws of the nature and there cannot be a freedom there which you expect that you must have. The body is one such structure. Although it is a little bit autonomous, it is not like a rock, not like a tree. There is a little bit of freedom there, but it still needs food. It still needs air. It is a part of the ecosystem. It cannot survive without the environment. And anyway, it decays because of the entropy, another law of the nature, and dissolves back into the environment. It is just another object. So if you have this illusion that I am the body, which is almost a delusion, then obviously it will be bound by the laws. Obviously there will be needs of the body. Obviously it won't survive. It is subjected to every other law of this physical world. Even though it is complex and it, it can sustain itself for 70, 80 years, which is a miracle in itself. Because no other object which is so dynamic and complex can be kept integrated for such a long time. It is a miracle in itself. But still it is bound because it is a structure. It cannot be anything else. The structure is that which binds it. And so if there is an identification with this structure, the body, then you are going to feel bound. Then you are going to say, I am bound. Because you think you are the body. Because you think you are this complex object in the world. So sometimes you think that I am not good looking. That is my limitation. But it is the body that is not good looking. It is a appearance in the world. It, it can look any, any way. It does not obey your commands or wishes. You can fix it a little bit, but you cannot change it completely. Sometimes you think that I am too short or I am too tall. 
well that is your limitation because you, your body is too short or your body is too tall sometimes you think that i am too fat or i am too skinny or i am too weak or i am not healthy and i have this disease or i have that disease and that is because the body has all these limitations not you remember there is no you there is no individual or person there these are merely thoughts in the mind this is the identification with the body and that is the cause of suffering remove this identification and then the body no longer limits you you are identified with the body and therefore it limits you similarly the mind for example sometimes you think that you know only one language and that becomes your limitation because and that becomes a reason for your suffering because you see other people they are speaking four or five languages and then you feel inferior because you never took trouble to expose yourself to all these exp- all these languages you are limited by what you experience in terms of the mind the mind is a self programming machine it programs itself as it experiences that is also called our conditioning so you are limited by your conditioning if you think that i am the mind these piles of conditioning is what you call as a person there is no other person the person is not an entity to be found in reality it is an idea in the mind just like we saw in our episodes on the illusion of individuality there is no person the person is in the mind the person is a bunch of memories a pile of memories the memories are there because of your past experiences so the past experiences that are stored in the mind they determine how free you are no experience complete bondage you are like a rock if there is a little bit of experience there is a little bit of freedom to think something or other if there is a lot of knowledge there is a lot of freedom but essentially the mind is also a structure the mind is a structure which is non physical in nature and is bound by the laws of the mind it is bound by the non physical laws and therefore if you identify with the mind or this person whatever it is then you are going to feel bound if there is no identification with the mind then the mind is doing its best it is a marvelous machine it is a miracle of mother nature there is nothing as complex as this human mind in this universe but this identification with this machine makes you bound it also becomes a cause of suffering because of this illusion of bondage because of your ignorance that i am the mind or i am the things that are stored in, stored in the mind i do not have this skill i do not have that skill i cannot sing i cannot dance i cannot do these great things that this intelligent people do and so on yes they are limitations but they are limitations of the mind if you identify with these limitations then you will be bound you will feel small you will feel limited as the experiences grow the freedom grows with the with the freedom comes the ability to choose infinite freedom is infinite number of choices that is the true freedom is all it also means that now the mind is no more a mind it has become a universe it has become a universal mind so if you identify with this universal mind which is experiencing everything which is storing everything this universal memory then you are almost boundless the problem is you identify with a small section of this mind which you think is me or you you say it is my mind and that is the problem this my and i and mine are the limitations they are the only real limitations actually otherwise mother nature is unlimited even in the bondage it is unlimited the whole is not bound by anything 
is already like this. This ignorance that I am this tiny thing in this whole, a separate part, somehow magically became separate from the wholeness. And now, this suffering arises because of this separation, this ignorance that I am this tiny, bound, miserable thing. And I do, do not know what I am because this identity keep, keeps shifting to various things. Sometimes it is the objects. I am poor. I don't have that things which the other people are enjoying and that is why I am miserable. I am bound by my poverty. This is the bondage to the objects. You think your life is defined by other objects and that makes you miserable, obviously, because your identification with the whole is broken and that causes this suffering that makes your life Hell, which is otherwise heavenly, which is otherwise perfect. Similarly, if you identify with a small part of the memory of this universal mind, and you say that I am limited by this mind, I cannot do this, I cannot even think this or think that, because I am limited, I am stupid, I am idiot, <laughs> there, is, there, is, there will be this suffering, there will be this delusion that I am bound. The reason is ignorance. The reason is identification. The reason is you think that you are something while the reality is it is an illusion. You are not something. You are not any experience that brings us to this experience, sir. The witnessing consciousness, the emptiness that is witnessing these experiences of the mind, of the body and of the objects of other people and the world and the universe and everything. What is it bound by? It has no shape, it has no structure, it is simple witnessing, it is simple experiencing and an act of being aware. That is all there is. It is not bound by any laws because it is empty. It, it does not need to maintain a structure there. It was not born, so it is eternal. It is not subjected to time because time is also an illusion created by the mind. The objects, the body and the mind, they are under the law of the time. Consciousness is beyond time. As we saw in, this, in, this, uh, in the part on the illusion of the time, an illusion of the space. It is beyond time and space this witnessing consciousness. It has no beginning and it has no end. It is the only thing that is experiencing all the things. It does not need to make choices because everything is happening in consciousness. All choices are being expressed in consciousness. It is not bound by any choice. It already has infinite amounts of choices. They are all being expressed. It is a dance of perpetual choosing. That is what our experience is. That is what the consciousness is choosing. It, it, is, it has chosen everything because that is the ultimate limit of freedom. If you choose something over other things, you are still bound by choice. That is why the mind is limited. That is why the mind feels as if it is bound because it can only choose one thing. It is conditioning forces it to choose only one choice out of infinite choices. But the consciousness allows all choices. The consciousness is free to choose everything. It wants to experience everything, so it chooses everything. And that is why there is good, there is bad, there is darkness, there is brightness, there is suffering, there is joy. It has chosen everything. It has chosen duality. It's, it never says no to anything. That is the unconditional love. That is the only relation that is possible. All other relations, whether of bondage or of freedom, are ignorance. They do not exist. as it, They exist only as illusions. The consciousness has no relation. It is not bound and therefore is completely free. If you disidentify with that which is bound, 
then are you bound? Isn't your identification is cause of all of your bondage? Why would you choose bondage instead of freedom? The freedom is always here. You are the consciousness. You are this witness of all the duality and all the limitations and all the infinite expense of the creation or existence. You are here always as this witness, empty, pure and eternal, timeless. Why did you choose something which is petty, inferior, bound by the time, decaying and impermanent? What prompted you to do that? You were given this whole expense of the sky to fly into and you chose a prison probably because of the security it offers. But that security is also illusory. Are you really secure in this prison that you have chosen for yourself? Whether it is a prison of this world, this world is also a prison, it's not boundless, it is bound by the laws, or whether it is a prison of this body, which is just a structure, this filthy, hairless, tailless monkey suit, probably you like it very much, but it is a cause of bondage, it is a prison, a prison of the body. Why did you take it up? Or you have chosen this non-material prison of the mind where you are limited by your own beliefs, your own conditioning. That is not really yours. It is being stuffed by the society in your mind. Nothing is yours. You think your body is yours? Well, no. <laughs> there is only relation with the body which is of bondage. That is why it looks like that it is yours. Let the body go, set the body free. Then is it is it yours? Isn't it already doing what it does? In spite of your delusion that it is mine or it is me, the body is free to do whatever it wants to do. The problem is you. You want it to be something else, which it cannot be. It is bound, a bound structure. Too late. It is already what it is. It is already an expression of the infinite. Why would you like, why, do, why would you want it to become something else? According to your limited intelligence, which is just conditioning, there is no intelligence there in your mind actually. It is what people have stuffed into your mind, you think, is intelligence. The real intelligence is knowing what you are and then being what you are instead of forcing that which you are not. That is stupidity. Out of this ignorance and all of this poison being stuffed into our minds by the ignorant people, we have chosen a prison for ourselves. The prison of objects, of bodies, of ideas, of concepts, of beliefs, superstitions, what not. There are many, many layers of ignorance and Every layer is bound by something or the other. The ev every layer is limited by something or the other. This was a very small analysis. You can do a extensive analysis of what binds you. And you will always find that it is a case of identification with, with that which is bound. You are not bound. You are free. You are freedom yourself. There is no separate you apart from the freedom that you are. It is not that you are something and that, that has freedom. You are the freedom. You do not have a structure. As soon as there is a structure, there is bondage. This is the law. You are a witness of all the structures. You are a witness of all the forms. You are not a form. You are formless, so you are boundless. You are timeless, so you are eternal. You do not decay into anything. There is nothing to decay into. You are a witness of all the appearances and disappearances that, that are happening on your screen of consciousness. You allow everything. 
Therefore, you have all the choices. You have infinite choices. And you do not oppose anything. You are not disgusted by anything. And so, you are the unconditional love. You are the infinite love. You don't need to love one thing or the other thing. Call it mine. <laughs> this gives me pleasure, so it is. I love it. This gives me suffering, so I hate it. That is not your nature. That is the nature of the mind. It has preferences. Pure consciousness prefers everything, which means it does not have any preferences. It is the witness of all preferences also. It is not bound by any preference. That is why it is possible for you to love everything because your nature is love. It is not that you are something which loves something else. Your nature is oneness with everything. You are everything and therefore the love comes naturally. You are looking for freedom. You are looking for liberation, especially the spiritual kinds. They are looking for the nirvana or mukti. Are you not that already? Why do you think you are bound and you need to do something to get out of that bondage? The world will always remain bound. You cannot take away the laws and, you know, it's impossible. If you take away the laws, the world will disintegrate into something meaningless. The body will remain bound because it is another object in the world. It is bound by the biochemistry and physical laws also. If you take away those laws, there won't be any body. Even if you make it very strong and beautiful and longer lasting and young, it is still bound. It is still going to produce pain and it will decay into something else. If you try to free the mind, well, there is a big possibility here, but as long as there is the structure of the mind, as long as it is bound by its own memories, its own experiences, it will remain a structure. No structure, no mind. The laws of the mind is the structure of the mind. It is not that the mind is something different and it, it is obeying some laws. No. It has self-organized itself using its tendencies, self-organizing principles give rise to laws. It looks like it is obeying them, but it is only organizing itself. The structure of the mind is the laws. The structure of the mind limits the mind. The memory limits the mind. You can expand it. There is a lot of possibility here, much better, bigger than the body. But it is still going to remain bound. As long as there is this belief that I am the small section of the mind, I am not the universal mind, then it will remain a small section of the mind. <laughs> it is not going to become free. And you do not need to do anything to become the universal mind. It is already there. The whole universe is a mind. As we saw in our past episode, it is all mind really. Your identification with a small part of it is the cause of your bondage, the cause of suffering. Is the cause of your thinking this that I need to free the mind. I need to liberate the mind which is me. It is not you. It cannot be liberated. That is the truth. That is the reality. You are already liberated. All you need to do is kick out this false identification with the stuff that you think you are. When you destroy your identification of all kinds, then you become what you are, which you already are. You are already free. You are boundless. The nirvana is here. The liberation is here. The mukti and the moksha is here right now, right here. You have this choice to become free. And the becoming free does not involve doing anything. It involves undoing which you have done. You have, you have accumulated a lot of garbage. You accumulated a lot of ignorance in your minds. That is producing this illusion of bondage. All you need to do is clean up. Clean, clean the garbage in your mind. See what you are. See what you are already through the lenses of your direct experience and logic and rationality. Do not 
be influenced by the ignorant and bound people. They are slaves of their structures that they have identified with. You were born in such a society which is which is bound by nature. You see, if there are no rules, if there are no, no laws, there won't be any society. So the society tries to keep you under bondage. And they unknowingly, probably, they are not bad people, you see, but they are ignorant people. They unknowingly stuff these kind of beliefs in your mind. That you are one of us. No, you are not one of them. You are everything already. They are one of you. <laughs> they are one of your forms. The whole humanity and all the creatures are your forms. You are expressing yourself, your will, your freedom through all the forms. That is what you are. That is what is your direct experience. That is not a conditioning. That is not a belief. That is not a superstition. That is how you know yourself to be. When you unlock your full potential, you will see that the full potential is already being expressed. You just wake up, wake up, open your eyes and see what you are. If you think you are bound, you are bound. And if you think you are liberated, you are liberated, you are free. It is just a matter of thought. It is just a matter of point of view. You have taken a small point of view. And that is why you have become small. Realize your greatness. Realize your vastness is unlimited. You are unlimited. You are the pure consciousness which has no limits. Cannot be bound. It is impossible for you to be bound. Thank you very much for listening. Asitoma.